Hello everyone and welcome to another Recommends video. This time we'll be doing a novel that was published in 1965. It's called Mission to Universe and it's by Gordon R. Dixon. Before we start, if you haven't subscribed, consider doing so. And give us a thumbs up and leave us a comment. Let us know if there's a series out there that you love that I haven't done or a book that you think should get done. Let us know what it is. And with that, let's get into this novel. General Benjamin Shaw has spent the past eight years of his life helping to create the first interstellar spacecraft. But because of how tense things are on Earth, the president has gotten cold feet about sending it out for its first test run. But the general have been preparing for this eventuality, carefully picking his crew, then modifying presidential orders, then he took the ship, having it jump into Earth's orbit and then jump to the orbit of Saturn. After four hours of calculating the next shift, which will take them to Alpha Centauri, they jumped. Once they arrived at Alpha Centauri, he gave them some time to celebrate. Then he produced the doctored presidential orders, ordering them to find a new planet that's habitable. The way the shift works was the longer the jump, the more time it takes to calculate it. So they'll have to plan carefully what star they'll be going to next. About this time they found a story. A cat had gotten on board. The next star that they jumped to is Archana. They will be coming in at a equivalent distance of Saturn. It's when they got to Archana that they ran into their first problem. The recycler, which recycles the air and the food, was acting up. In order to fix it, they would have to take it apart, and that would only leave them with 12 hours of air left. So they'd have to take it apart, find out what's wrong, fix it, and put it back together within that 12 hour span. They also discovered that there was a planet around Achena and they jumped to get closer to it. The planet that they call Achena 1 had a gravity that was slightly greater than Earth's and a atmosphere that was not breathable. They decided to land on the planet and try to fix the recycler there instead of trying to fix it in space. They landed on the planet and was able to take apart the recycler. Meanwhile, two men against orders went off to plant a flag. But something none of them realized was that the planet was seismically unstable and prone to earthquakes. And when the earthquakes began, they were able to quickly put the recycler back together and put it on the ship. But the two men they found were dead. They quickly left the planet and with this recycler back together they found what the problem was. Someone had put a piece in backwards. Over the next few weeks they jumped to Alcohol, Alcyon, Betelgeuse and Teres without finding a suitable planet. They finally jumped to Polaris where they detected a planet and when they jumped close to the planet they saw that it had life but the atmosphere was not breathable by humans. They landed on the planet and the first thing they did was ensure that everyone who left the ship had an oxygen mask and tanks on. Then Ben had them build a giant 10 foot wall around the entire ship 60 yards out. The planet had no trees but it had giant vines covering it and there were herbivores that grazed on the vines. Nowhere did they see any carnivores of any type. When they examined the vines, they realized they could use the vines to produce food and to get all the water that they need. An examination of the herbivores found that they could get the protein they needed from the herbivores. So they began to catch them, pen them up, and slaughter them. It was sometime later, one night, that they were attacked by a new creature that they called the vine wolves. It seems that these creatures lived under the thickest vines and these creatures were capable of strategizing. At this time, there were two teams that were out from the ship that were out there with the intention of herding some of the herbivores closer to the ship, and they were being attacked by the vine wolves. At the same time, the vine wolves seemed to be herding the herbivores close to the wall, packing them in, so they would use them to get over the wall. Of the eight men that went out, only six made it back to the ship. The ship had to take off in a hurry before the vine wolves got over the walls and overran them. They jumped to a spot a light year away from the planet 
and there they listened as Ben told them that from now on they would not be landed on any planets until they found a planet that met their objective. Then they decided to jump closer to the center of the galaxy. There they would find the stars are closer together and there would be a greater chance of them finding a planet that could support human life. The first couple of G-type stars they found that had planets, all the planets were barren. Then they found a planet with the right atmosphere and that seemed to be completely Earth-like. Within minutes of landing, a flying machine came out and began encircling their ship with golden lines. Once they were completely encircled, another flying machine came with two creatures that had gray fur. They stood outside the golden lines and placed the rod into the ground. Ben and his second in command went outside to greet them. Once both groups were face to face, they saw the rod had an image appear above it and it was an image of Ben coming through the golden lines, getting into the air car with the two creatures flying off to a building to meet others and then coming back. It was obvious that they wanted Ben to come with them and they were promising to bring him back. Ben went with them and they arrived at another building where they went in, where they tested Ben's fear and anger responses. They then showed Ben a video clip of their history. It seems that about 100,000 years ago, their worlds, which is about 12 of them, were all invaded by a long golden people who came in, destroyed them, and took their worlds. And the survivors ran and escaped to this world. They then carried Ben back to his ship. Ben promptly engineered an escape by drilling holes on the, the ground around the golden lines up to the top of the cliffs to the machines that control those lines, disabling their guards and then disabling the machines and then taking off. So the civilization of the Griffers were dying. It was slowly withering away because of the fear of what had happened to them. So Ben decided that they were going to go and take a look at the 14 worlds that the Griffers had run from, that the Golden Ones had taken over to see what was going on there. So they jumped into each world, stayed for 60 seconds, took pictures of the world and jumped out to analyze the pictures. And what they saw on each of these worlds were ruins. It seems that in the past 100,000 years or so, the Golden One's civilization had also collapsed. So they decided to land on the first of the 14 that they had surveyed. When they landed on the planet and they opened up the airlock, it was hit by a blast from a javelin weapon. The Golden Ones were still alive. The Golden Ones quickly rounded up the people them that they had access to. The rooms that were locked they couldn't get into, but the others, they took them out and held them under guard and took everything that they could carry and left with it. Ben managed to get away, get into the ship and arm himself and came out and attacked the golden ones. He soon killed a few of them and then realized that all of the javelin weapons that they had were all painted. They only had one working javelin weapon and that was in the hands of their leader. Once the other humans were freed and the guards killed, they routed the golden ones and it turned out that the golden ones were now operating on instinct and no longer had the capacity to think. And once they realized that the humans could kill them easily, they avoided the humans like the plague. They were able to find records of the golden ones and it turns out that a species had driven them from their home worlds and they turned around and did the same thing to the gray furs. So while the gray furs civilization died because of their fear to do and go anywhere. The Golden One civilization died because of their aggressiveness where they attacked each other until they slowly lost their minds. So Ben felt he had done his job. He had found 14 worlds that were ready for humans to come and take. But then Ben ran into another problem. His second in command, Walt, did not wish to leave. He wanted them all to stay on the planets that they have found and leave Earth to fend for itself. But Ben's goal was to find living space for all of the humans on Earth, so he decided that they were going back. It was on their way back to Earth when Walt made his move. Ben had anticipated this and tried to avoid it by keeping the navigational charts for the way home locked in his safe, but eventually he had to take them out and then 
Walter had gotten a hold of a javelin blaster and attacked Ben in his office, but Ben managed to kill Walt. And then they headed back for Earth, where Ben anticipated he would be arrested, charged, and then executed. When they got back to Earth, things was not as they assumed it would be. They were all treated as heroes, and Ben was given the Congressional Medal of Honor. The knowledge that he had taken the phase ship and gone out into outer space had leaked out, and instead of causing a war, it calmed everyone down. There was a court martial, of course, but he was cleared of all charges. The government wants him to be a part of the new Space Force, and private industry wants his endorsement on every range of product. As he left the hotel, he thought to himself that he had done his part, that it was time for him to relax and have somebody else take charge. But then he saw Nora, one of the women crew members that was on the ship with him that he loved, but he couldn't express at the time because of his position and she was waiting for him. And that's how the book ends. I want to thank you for watching and listening. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. Drop us a comment, give us a thumbs up, and I will see you in the next video.